Hi everybody, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to be talking about the, the thing that is um, kernel CI, upstream kernel CI, or something that is in place of it, or kind of trying in place, to be in place of it. Something that exists as sort of a, more of an idea than the actual fact. But nevertheless, something that is people want, well, try, that people are trying to do. And I'm going to be talking from the point of view of a CI system maintainer and a person who is developing a CI system for the Linux kernel and participating in these discussions, not from a point of view of a maintainer or a developer. And the talk is targeted, I guess, as you would, uh, to people like me, because that's, that's what I see. But uh, I would like to hear opinions from other people looking from outside, as well as maintainers and developers. So, do we have any maintainers here? Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for coming. So, um, please, uh, there's going to be quite a bit of time left for, for a discussion, so I'll be glad to hear what you think. So, uh, I'm Nikolai Kondrashov. I'm working as a software engineer at uh, CKI project at Red Hat, where we're building a CI system for Red Hat internal use and also for running tests for upstream for maintainers who are interested in that thing. Uh, I work with the Linux Foundation's kernel CI project on the KCIDB system, um, which I'm going to be talking about a little later. And I do electronics and embed it as a hobby, and that's partially why I'm here, apart from you know doing the kernel work. Uh, I'm living in Finland, but I was born in Russia. So briefly, uh, Short overview of the kernel testing systems, what kernel CI and KCIDB are doing, and uh, then I'm going to try to define the continuous integration just for the purpose of this talk. And we'll take a look at possible metrics, how we can measure CI, where the, where the kernel, kernel CI is, and uh, what the uh, hard limitations of that, what the challenges are, and what we can possibly do with that, in my opinion. So, and these are slides that I put in all my presentations these days. But uh, there is a ton of, a lot of CI systems which are trying to help test the Linux kernel from all interested parties. And this is just a, just a sample of logos that we, that we have there. They all have their own um, report emails that they send to developers. And they all have their own dashboards or something like that. And uh, Kernel CI is the, as I said, is a Linux Foundation's uh, project which is trying to be the Kernel CI. Uh, kernel CI has um, their own labs and uh, their own CI and the testing system and uh, run tests on various hardware. But also there is the KCIDB part where we put together testing reports from various CI systems, and uh, this is um, the current state of who is sending data to KCIDB. Uh, and uh, we're trying to build a system which would have, which would ag aggregate those testing results and provide a single dashboard and a single report to developers who are interested in this thing. And to, you know, to save time and to, to save effort for development and for interpretation of those results. But um, conceptually, it's very simple. We just get some JSON from the, from the submitters. We put it, put it into database, display it on dashboard, and we look at what's coming in at the changes, and we generate uh, notifications about the new results, what's coming on. Um, we get about uh, 30, uh, 300,000 test reports per day, and uh, maybe um, 10,000 builds for a bunch of revisions. Um, dashboard looks like this. Uh, it's, it's a Grafana prototype. Uh, and we have reports which look, can look like this, but like, I mean, they are customizable. So this one is aggregating results from uh, four CI systems uh, and displaying like the build results and the, te and the test failures and uh, the overall status and gives you a link to see in the see the dashboard and see the actual up-to-date and full results there. So for, for our purpose, purposes, I'm going to simplify this. And, but the main idea of CI, as you all know, is to test everything, uh, test every change, as many changes as possible, 
at every moment and provide feedback. From that point of view, we can define, well, let's say, four metrics, four base metrics that we can measure a CI system by. So how much functionality is tested, which, I don't know, what, what kind of coverage we get. Uh, then latency, how, how fast feedback is produced. Is it, is it coming in you know, after a few hours or later? Uh, reliability, how, how, you know, how can you trust the results? How much can you trust the results? Can you, can you get the, a failure when it's actually a failure or a pass when it's actually a pass? And finally, how easy it is to understand feedback, accessibility, how, easy, how easily can you figure out what's actually broken, where the, what you need to fix. Uh, from that point of view, the ideal CI is covering everything, provides you instant feedback as, as, you, as you submit a change or as you create a change, and uh, it's always, always true, and it just says like what's broken, and, uh, so you don't have to figure it out. And the worst CI, of course, is not covering anything useful and uh, takes forever and uh, never tells you the right thing and uh, you cannot understand what's the same. So from that point of view, it's, it's worse than no CI. So between those extremes, so where we are with the current upstream kernel CI. So uh, s some people uh, try to measure coverage of their tests and because everybody is testing their own thing. There is no single entity who controls the DCI there or knows all about it. Of course, we don't, don't have the results. But I, I have heard rumors that some people tested and tried something and you know, have some numbers, but uh, nobody really seems to know. Like, like this, this is uh, the usual uh, LCOV output page with coverage. This is for run at the Red Hat CKI for AR64, and it could look like this, uh, that we, we had a bunch of tests, and we ran them, and it's been, I don't know, 12% code lines was covered. But this is not uh, the whole of code base. This is just, you know, the most important things, I suppose. I don't remember exactly which directories we covered, but it's quite a lot of them. Um, in part because, of course, uh, instrumentation in the kernel is kind of difficult and doesn't always work and uh, makes the kernel much slower. But um, it could look like this. So nobody does really know, like, nobody knows which tests we run where and, uh, and how much they cover. Well, uh, we at KCIDB know a little bit more because we get all those results so we can take a look at them. So uh, looking at the mail list, and this is just like, you know, not unsens unscientific and uh, I didn't have time to, you know, to really scrape the mail list and see what's the actual situation because that's quite a lot of work. But looking at that and taking a little bit of samples, it comes out to be several hours, just several hours, which is quite good for kernel CI in some cases, but it could also be a few weeks after after the change was posted or, you know, on the mail list. But it's faster, of course, for the, for the merged commits where people pick up uh, commits from a Git branch. And the pre-merge CI is mostly non-existent. So, um, and those test results are quite unreliable and many CI systems and CI system maintainers, they, they do actual manual reviews of test results before sending them to maintainers and to developers because things go wrong quite often. And accessibility, it is, it is quite good in places. Uh, some, some CI systems go like a long way to make it as, as accessible as possible. And uh, the kernel maintainers are quite demanding of that, so that's why I guess. But all those results, they are all different, all di done in a different way, so that makes it a little more difficult. So hard limits. Of course, we can only, like since the kernel is an abstraction layer for hardware, and to really test, test that, you need to test against all the hardware, right? So the natural limit for that is how much hardware we have, we can test on, and that's how much coverage we get. Of course, that's, that's not a problem for general functionality, but for the hardware abstraction. Uh, latency, again, and 
just just the hardware availability. So how many how many tests you can run at the same time? So the more hardware you have, the faster you can go. And uh, reliability again is uh, dependent on hardware. How reliable the hardware is. If if the hardware is not working reliably, then it's hard to do reliable tests. And of course the kernel itself. But tests contribute to improving kernel reliability. So that's great. And accessibility, finally, again, hardware availability, because uh, understanding what's happening without access to hardware, which is often the case, is quite hard. So that's the natural limit. And the kernel complexity also affects it a lot, because the test can only be as simple as the, as the kernel itself that it's testing. OK, so what are the challenges? So the coverage is. Uh, I think that there's quite a lot of people who want to write tests, and a lot of them write them, and there's there's a lot of tests in the wild, and all the companies are writing tests. So that's not a problem, except uh, that it's held held back by other difficulties that we have, so, which we'll go over in a moment. So latency. Um, so the challenge with latency, I think, is that it is not safe to do Primer CI except for general functionality because anybody can post on the mail list and you don't want to just run anybody's code on your hardware directly. You don't want them to start mining Bitcoin and you don't want them to wreck your hardware. So this situation kind of prevents people from running more on real hardware in Primer CI even if it was you know, more widespread. And then the slow human reviews, of course, uh, contribute to that because it has to go. Somebody has to go and take a look at it when they woke up next day, and then they send the message, and it takes a while. So um, a big problem for reliability, I think, is the fact that the tests are often out of sync with the kernel. Uh, kernel changes, tests change, and uh, issues come into the kernel. Tests start failing. They keep failing while somebody is still fixing the kernel, and they keep failing and they keep failing. And the maintainers don't want to hear that. They don't want to know. Like if they've seen somebody have seen that failure, they don't want to hear about it. They don't want to be said said that uh, you know you submitted this change and failed while it's not their failure. And of course, developers the same. Everybody doesn't. That, nobody does want to be you know, waste their time investigating a problem that they have nothing to do with. Um, accessibility is the, is the, I think, the only problem with accessibility is that there is just so much different things, different reports, different dashboards, so it's difficult to figure out. And that's something that I think we can improve. So, uh, and these, these, these are like just the basic challenges, and they come together to give us more problems. The low reliability and accessibility, they lead to, of course, to low uh, developer trust towards results. So if you, if the developer knows that that the test results often fail because of some other issue that they have nothing to do with, and because and if, if those results are hard to understand because they don't have access to hardware, and the if the report doesn't include some information or includes too much information, their trust and interest for these results plummets. So uh, as a result of that, uh, nobody wants to use those test results for gating, right? Because if, 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 if you spend too much time investigating it and then it's, you know, it's not your failure, like you're not going to look at those to decide whether you can merge this or not. As a result of that, um, the test developers don't get feedback on their results and the tests don't improve. And the code is not improved because people don't look at test results. So the whole improvement, the whole feedback loop is starving because of this problem. So high latency, again, contributes to, to lack of gating. Because if, if you have to wait for a result you know, for, for a week or two weeks, that's kinda, that kind of sucks. So as a result, the changes go in without, you know, without consulting test results bugs get in, they stay longer in the code base, tests keep failing, and again, this contributes to more latency because you have to, you know, review more tests, review more issues, you know, each time the test fails, you have to, okay, this is this test, 
it's failing because of that issue. And the more issues there are, the harder it is to triage, and the slower it gets, the more bugs get into the into the kernel tree. And that brings higher latency again. So it's a vicious loop. So uh, this is a little diagram of how I think things affect each other. It's a little complicated, but uh, I use this to kind of record what I think about this whole situation. But we'll take a closer look at this later. So if I had to summarize this, I think that the this is the main thing that we can take out of there. But uh, enough of that. Uh, it's my dog. So. Uh, uh, that's enough gloom, and uh, I think um, we can go on to, you know, actually trying to, to think what we can do with this, or or what we can't do, actually. So the difference from uh, like a kernel community and any open source community, actually, that it's not owned by a single company, is that you cannot really force people to do CI, right? In the company, you can try to do this thing, but like you get your tests just good enough, and then you say, like, okay, now we do gating, and we fix the test afterwards, and we start up the feedback loop, and there's a, a, after a bit of stalling and you know, fighting, it starts up. You cannot do that here. You have to you have to get the tests working perfectly to keep the the developer trust high and keep keep you know thing going, because without developer trust, it's not going to work. So, uh, so what can we actually do? And we will be going over each metric. Uh, some of them more important. Some of them are just just for for notice. So, for coverage, obviously, uh, companies have the most hardware that we can use for testing, right? So, if we attract more companies into testing, into sending results, uh, it's going to be better. We will have more tests, more coverage. And hopefully that's going to improve things. So if you're a company and you have your own CI system and you want to contribute to kernel testing, you can talk to me or just send a message to the mail list, uh, and we will set you up, give you credentials, and you can send your test results to KCIDB and uh, help us uh, get those results to developers. Uh, if you have hardware that you want to contribute, you can talk again to us and uh, we can set up a Lava Lab, for example, and connect it to Kernel CI and we'll submit tests on your hardware and the developers will get those results. So, in any case, write to the mail list. Uh, latency. So, uh, of course, uh, it would be great to get pre merge testing. So, to get less, pub less, less time to limit the time the bugs stay in public code, or just eliminate that as much as possible, and to improve the, the speed of the loop, to shorten the feedback loop. So um, many people were trying to do those things, and there's many approaches to do pre-merge testing, and uh, some, people, some people use patchwork systems to pick up patches from the mail list and then uh, you know, test them, and then submit the results to patchwork. And patchwork has facilities for that, and, uh, and, and that's working. Uh, the only thing, again, is the authentication. The patches that are sent there can be from anybody, so you have to be careful how to run those. Uh, another thing I think is uh, a potential avenue is that, is that there is about 50 repositories uh, in the maintainer's file that are on either on GitHub or on a GitLab instance. That, that allows us to, to set up authentication, actually, for those patches and to connect a CI system. So one idea that uh, kernel CI is exploring is, for example, offering a GitHub action that submits your patch to kernel CI and then gives you a check mark or a red cross on your merge request. And the, the, the main benefit of that is that you can actually get access to real hardware for testing uh, and in your pre-merge uh, workflow, in your contribution workflow. So for that reason, um, if that thing works, we can, we can then talk to more maintainers and encourage them to use those Git Forges, GitLab, Git, GitHub CI. And I know this is controversial and discussed to death in the community, but um, uh, this is this is one thing that some people can be open to, as we can see that some 
uh, a few, let's say, a few trees are actually doing the merge request and pull request workflow. And the, in this case, as a, as a selling point, uh, the CI integration can be actually a, set, you know, a thing. So to get that started, I think, of course, the CI systems need to talk to maintainers. And uh, one, one step at a time, and we can, we can, for example, talk first, first thing that actually many, many CI systems are doing is offering to test a, test a staging branch in the maintainer's repository, where the maintainers can push changes that they want to test, and that gets us authentication and gets the tests running. It's not pre-merge, but it's better than nothing, and, it's, and it can establish the trust and prove that your tests are viable and stable and uh, good enough to go to the next step. So after this, we can, you can like you, need, you can pick a few tests that you can start with that are stable. And uh, for example, set up. Um, okay, what was I talking here about? Yeah. So <laughs> so the, the thing is that you need to start with the tests that they can trust. But case IDP can be a part of that, of course, setting up the, the subscriptions because case IDP allows the, the user to subscribe to particular tests, particular branches, compilers, architectures, whatever you want to start with um, to limit the set of data that, that you get notifications on and that you get receive results for to just the test that you can, you know, you can start working with. Um, so that could be one thing where you can start as a maintainer or as a CI system developer if you want to sell your CI, CI results. Um, so there's, there's this thing that is happening across CI systems is that, of course, there's manual reviews, but there's just so many, so many tests and so many failures that it, it's, it's inefficient. So many CI systems are setting up triaging and uh, looking at the test results where they automatically can determine if there is an issue in a test result. Uh, we are building, in case IDB right now, a triaging system like that. But uh, already, for example, Graphics CI has a system where they can and there are various parameters of the tests and the conditions where the tests executed and the actual files where to look for, for the issue and like regular expressions where to match, for example, if there's a string in a test output or in a console log, then that means this is this issue and then we don't raise this test failure. And the same thing is actually happening at Red Hat with, uh, with CKI. There's a, there's a UI describing an issue, linking into a bug report. And the the best the best system is at Google Sys, Google Sysbot where they able to actually identify if a kernel crash uh, is the same as the, the one that they they saw before based on a string that they also extract automatically from from the previous one then they are able to combine those crashes into a single thing and not alert the maintainers or developers uh, about this this issue again and at the same time provide uh, samples of those crashes. So, so we are building things like that in KCIDB to let uh, CI systems actually who have this kind of data about non-issues, let them submit that information to KCIDB so that results from other CI systems can also contribute and that we can finally uh, get something green out of there because at the moment, uh, Basically, every revision that we get in case IDB is red because at least one build, usually tens of them, uh, failed. Uh, multiple tests failed this way or another. So as, as, as is, it's basically impossible to send those results to maintainers because there is always a failure. Even a single CI system has a hard time managing the output so that, so that it's, you know, usable for somebody and not failing all the time. But when they combine all of these, you get, you get red all the time. So reliability. And oh, this is going to be controversial as well. So 
I think that uh, that a good 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 step could be <coughs> moving some of the tests, uh, more tests, into the kernel tree. That would help us keep the, both the kernel and the and the tests in sync. That's that's how it's normally done in CI, right? So that when you submit something uh, for a change, you can also fix the test at the same time, and then we have less desynchronization. And I think that LTP could be one of those tests to start with. And of course, we would need to integrate this into kernel documentation, and you know, to, to tell people that this is the test that you can you can run and make it you know kind of more official. Uh, there's of course the problem that when you have that test there in that in that particular branch, like for example in mainline, uh, it kind of gets bound to the to that to the state of that mainline, and we have the situation right now where LTP is being executed against uh, mainline, stable, all other branches. And LTP has to actually handle all that and has to know which branches uh, actually work, where is, the, where is the issue, how to work with this branch, how to work with that branch. So when you integrate it into the kernel tree, it's kind of like you don't no longer need that and that helps simplify the test code a lot, of course, but then you can no longer test all the branches. And to handle that, you would have to backport LTP to those branches as well. But that's possible, and that makes actually uh, things simpler, I think, in some way. So, and of course, if you want that to actually work and to have an effect, you have to, you have to in exercise those tests more often to help keep them in sync. So those tests that are in three need to be prioritized, executed more often and faster and, and closer to the actual change. So uh, accessibility, again, I think that uh, KCIDB can help and uh, you can subscribe to those notifications and you can give us feedback and you can help us make them better. Uh, there's a link to guide how to start development. So this is the complete picture. That I think how things could work out and how we could affect this whole situation. And that's all. Thank you. All right, any comments, questions, ideas? We've got one question from the stream. Maybe we'll start with that. Um, Lucas asks, um, have you consider, considered ignoring uh, tests that are known to fail? They've done that in their company and it really helped them start uh, their CI up. Uh, of course, uh, all, all the CI systems have a facility for that, some less developed, some more developed, and that's what the um, known issue detection does, for example, at CKI and uh, at Intel Graphics CI and at other systems, and that's what we are building in KCIDB. Uh, there, is a, there are interesting challenges in that, and I can talk about that more. <laughs> but I guess it, it will be a, a bit long for, for the remaining time. Any more questions? There was a hand, yes. Oh, thank you. So I have one comment about your slide move tests in tree, no desync with the code. I fully agree with that, with that uh, statement. I've. Yeah, I fully understand and I will explain to you why. Um, I was the uh, primary architect of a neural simulator a long time ago. We had about 20,000 tests in total. Uh, the tests were specified in a declarative format. Uh, YAML was a possibility, for instance. Um, that was, those tests were always part of the code and we converted the YAML specifications of the tests into HTML, which was then picked up by documentation writers. So this gave us a good guarantee that the tests were in sync with the code and that the documentation was documenting what works. And it gave, gave us also a very nice uh, structure for conversation between developers and uh, documentation writers, including tutorials, by the way. So it's just a comment that I had, something that popped yeah. up in my mind when I saw that slide. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, th these, are, these are absolutely, um, there's a lot of uh, benefits of doing that. And kernel, of course, has K-unit and K-self tests in three already, 
but this, these are just a small set of tests that everybody wants to run, so there's much more tests that can go in there. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, I am the maintainer of the media subsystem, and we also have some demands. And one of the things that I'm also doing uh, while at Intel, I'm working on the two sets that are testing GPU drivers. And uh, we add a lot of documentation there, and I actually developed a new, a new way to document things. So maybe we can try to sync up, and maybe I can, we can help together in order for both increasing the coverage on media drivers and also that documentation issue, which is something that it should be really bad, the best documented than what we have right those days. Of course. Thank you. Of course. And uh, I also have one question. Uh, right now, we are actually using uh, what do you use to run the test? I mean, it is just a, it is just a kind of CI database where you are collecting data from other tests on Jenkins or whatever, or do you also have your own uh, testing environment where you are running the test directly? So the kernel CI project, uh, thank you for the question. The kernel CI project uh, itself has a CI system there's the, the code kernel CI native, uh, where we run LTP and other tests <clears throat> for whoever is interested. So there's a lot of that. And as well, we have the KCIDB system where we put those results, plus results from Intel, Microsoft, ARM, Google, and others. So there's both. Yes, Tim? So, um, uh, I really like the analysis of uh, what the deficiencies are and kind of where the gaps are. I thought, I thought it was really good. Um, one of the things uh, I thought was very interesting, uh, you know, har access to hardware is always a problem when you're a contributor, right? Because you don't know if you're breaking someone else's hardware. And so I always thought it would be really neat if there was a way to, as a contributor, request testing on specific hardware but you have this chicken and egg problem where people aren't going to make their boards available to third parties for for random tests you know uh, uh, until they'd really trust kind of the ecosystem is not going to break their stuff right a lot of the boards you want to test on are uh, proprietary behind company firewalls at least in my space uh, and so, you know, we're not going to let some random code come in and test our stuff. But it'd be really nice as a maintainer or as a contributor if you could say, well, I want this to run on like a, a bunch of different hardwares or maybe a bunch of different GPUs or something. Um, and so setting up some kind of ecosystem where that's accessible on demand, it, it would be really good. And I think kernel CI has kind of the seeds of that um, where someone can set up a lava lab and take job requests. Uh, but to flesh that out, I think, would be really nice. Yes, absolutely. And I think that the key thing for that is really the authentication of the, of this, of the requester. OK, like you're not going to get access to NDA hardware, right? But uh, and, and the test results on NDA hardware uh, not going to go out in any case. But it's possible to set up a system where authenticated users, like certain authenticated users, can request this kind of stuff, like say specify, like I want this hardware and I want this test to run there for, for this change. And that change can include the change to the test that you actually want to run. And this way you get to exercise the actual you know, functionality you want to test on that hardware. Uh, and Git Forge is like GitLab and GitHub provide facilities for that. You can put you know, stuff in your commit message that would affect which tests are actually executed. For example, there are other ways, like you know, having bots who go and read your comment and take commands from there that execute that. That's a little more involved. But these things, with, with authentication and with some sort of platform underneath it, these things are possible. All right. Uh, I have a comment about uh, reliability and a recommended read. It's a blog post by Netflix on 
how they track uh, performance regressions because normally you have a threshold and you're not allowed to go over the threshold and a lot of the times you might have a fluke that temporarily go above the threshold and then you increase the threshold and then over time you suddenly have a regression. So what Netflix does is they look at multiple test results in a history and then they look at the derivative, are we going the wrong direction and also look if they can also uh, determine if this was just one fluke in a series of tests. So that's a recommended read. It's called uh, fixing performance regressions before they happen. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea, yes. And uh, that's, that's what I have in plans for KCIDB, but uh, I am the main contributor. I, I have one intern right now, but I don't have time to actually contribute myself uh, because I'm busy with Red Hat stuff. But I would love to see more people contributing to KCIDB, and uh, I'll be working on adding more documentation for developers, so that's easier, but really, like if you have an idea, come over and uh, like I, I have these plans absolutely like an idea is how to do that and there are very interesting challenges with that that I can I can talk about <laughs> so this could be a lot of fun to be had any more questions comments okay awesome thanks everybody <laughs>